Today, we begin recording our lectures on software project management. As all of us have seen in the beginning of the series, software engineering basically consists of two major parts, one pertaining to making of the software that is analysis, design, coding and the second part of managing the software project. We are going to see a series of these particular topics being covered in next 8 to 10 lecture and today we begin with our first topic on introduction to software project management. So, when you look at the software project manager, basically we start with the question what is project and what is an operation. Now, basically an organization achieves its objectives by organizing its activities either as projects or operations. Operations are the ongoing activities of the organization, very repetitive in nature, whereas projects are non-routine one-time activities. For instance, developing a payroll software is a project, whereas running the payroll package every month becomes an operation. So, projects are often used by the organization to respond to situations which can not be handled normally in the operations kind of a setup. Okay? And although the projects are non-repetitive in nature, they consume a lot of resource and therefore, they need to be managed in a very proper kind of a manner. Now, let us take a simple example. Suppose, you have a IT system to be introduced in an organization. You know, it can be done as a collection of several projects. Okay. For instance, you can have a consulting firm, you know, to establish the exact scope of a particular project, say a general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, you know and what kind of strategies to be used for developing such an application. Once you have done that, you may have another project to sort of interview the users and find out whether the proposed system will make a significant difference to their operations and activities. Okay. Then once you have zeroed in on the project, the, in the analysis phase itself, you may take several projects like for instance, to develop the models. You may need a process model to be developed, you may need a data model to be developed, a time frame model to be developed. So, if you had a system to be developed for a refinery, you know, these activities themselves could be significantly large projects. Other applications could include, you know, even modeling the database, you know, and making sure that it is properly designed, tuned and fits uh, within the framework of the organizational, you know, data model. Another way of looking at it is, you have a program to be developed, then the implementation can itself be considered as a separate project and maintenance obviously will be yet another particular project. Okay. So, now this brings us to the next particular question, what is really project management? Okay. 
So, a project management involves application of knowledge, skills, tools, techniques to the project activities with the aim of meeting or exceeding the stakeholders requirement. Okay. Let us look at this figure for instance. In an organization, you need to balance the schedule, the cost and quality often referred also as the performance particular parameters within the resources that are available for the projects you know use. Okay. Once you have got the resources, then your next job is to balance between the team and the technology, is to balance between the team and the technology. So, look at the figure again. Here we say that productivity and the profits, you know, need to be the pivot to balance the team and the technology productivity and you know profits need to be the, the same. So, now let us now look at what is the need for formal project management. The first need arises basically because the sponsors of the project are interested in making sure that the resources allocated are properly utilized. They are also interested in completion of the project on time. Okay. Then the project work itself involves identifying the requirements, which itself is a very difficult task. All the stakeholders may have conflicting expectations from the projects okay. and the resources that you need for the project need to compete with the other activities of the organization, because organization ultimately has a very limited pool of resources. And it is from this pool of resources that your project needs to acquire the resources. Okay. And your project does not run in a vacuum, it is faced by problems like scarcity of resources, uncertainties, conflicting interests of stakeholders. So, it is not possible to get a project done, you know, without having a formal project management. Then we come to the next particular topic, who executes the project. Okay. So, even though the projects are temporary and unique in nature, they cannot run in isolation, they need to run within the frameworks of the organization. So, the project may be undertaken either within the organization itself okay, or it may be undertaken by sponsoring it to an outside agency which specializes in undertaking such projects. Okay. So, you look at it from that particular point of view, the first figure this shows that you have a project, you know, which is being done within the walls of the organization. Alternatively, you may have a situation where the project is completed by a sponsoring agency outside the organization. Okay. Now, once we got this particular thing, we say okay, whoever is you know executing the project, you know, the project basically runs within the organization. Okay. Then we look at the projects fit within the organization. Okay. So, there are socio-economic environments in an organization. You have a structural framework about the for instance, the organization structure, you have political framework of the organization, okay. you have power balances within the organizations and there are competing applications within the organization, you know. Then symbolic frameworks, you know, like, uh, you know, like who needs to do what and who needs to be, you know, sort of uh, giving his or her blessings to per completing that particular project in an organization is very necessary. Human resources framework is also very important, the style of leadership, the organization culture, the motivational aspects, job design, job enrichment, all these factors play a very important role in the organization. Okay. So, basically in a project role, the kind of environment, the management's role 
in a project environment should be you know to support the project, but not to do it itself. Okay? And the project manager is expected to sort of be worthy of receiving the delegation of authority from the top management to achieve their aims and objectives. Okay? So, the management's role in a project management should be to help the PM to focus on the results and not to try to do it himself. So, now let us see for instance what an effective project manager needs to do. First, he always needs to follow the management's you know clues. Similarly, he needs to appropriately delegate work to his subordinate. He always needs to encourage his team members. He must remember that the users are the ultimate beneficiaries of the products okay? and never forget that he is the leader. Okay? The leadership goes well beyond being just a manager, the leadership goes beyond. So, now we look at it, how does the organization achieve all these particular things? Simple thing the organization does you know is to have periodic reviews of the project manager's job. Okay? So, projects are only one of the activities of the organization. So, the management can only periodically check whether the project is happening as it is planned. Okay? Very often changes in the other aspects of an part of the organization may affect a project a takeover for instance is a good example okay if two banks you know were to merge okay the incomplete projects in both these organizations will be very seriously affected by the change okay so similarly what happens in a project may also affect the organization just like what happens in the organization affects the project so there is a need for a periodic review to make sure that the objectives of the management and the objectives of the project are not conflicting with each other. Similarly, success rate of a project can be improved by better control over the project. A trivial analogy would be falling from the first floor of a you know building as against rolling down the staircase you know like you would not really want to know only at the end of the project that it has failed you know you would like to make sure that you periodically check to make that you know the project is still on course you know and it is being conducted in an appropriate manner okay another thing is with time the management must continue to commit resources to the project and it's not possible to commit these particular resources unless you know that the earlier allocation of resources has been well utilized okay so the management review of a project is aimed at evaluating its progress its likely successes and basically answering the question you know whether to continue to invest in this particular project okay so management review of the project needs to occur at least one level above the project manager on an ongoing basis okay now a project manager works within the framework of an organization so it is unlikely that the project will succeed unless it has a full commitment from the top management. Typically, a performing organization may sponsor several projects, you know, and there are several factors that are not under the control of project manager, but he needs to still work within that. So, we expect that if a project is to succeed, the top management needs to give a commitment, okay, so that they give guidance to the project manager, they tell them, I mean, they tell him their objectives and priorities, okay. Uh, they have approvals which are done on a timely manner, executive level contacts is easily available with the project and the customers, support during the conflict resolution is also provided, cooperation from the other members of the performing organization, you know, the support groups within the organization is obtained, okay. And last but not the least, the top management also needs to mentor the project manager. Okay? Now, we ask a very simple question. 
Okay, it's a very tall order for the project manager. How does he really achieve these things? Simple, you know, the project manager, okay, cannot work, you know, as an individual and make a project success. It's a matter of a group work. Okay, so it is necessary that a group of people need to work together to achieve a common objectives. Okay. This problem is very complicated because the users and the developers may also keep on changing within the frame, what you call the time frame of the project, you know. So, optimizing the system under these changing environments is a very crucial task that the project manager has to perform. Okay. The simple rule is you need to sub-optimize the subsystems to optimize the system as a whole. Okay. Now, let us look at what are the key factors which influence an organization. Okay. On one hand, here is the staff. The staff he gets may be, you know, experienced or inexperienced. You know, he may have tools and techniques which may be either ordinary tools and techniques or automated tools and techniques. He may have to use either structured methods okay, or work in an unstructured manner. So, this last aspect of working in a structured manner is the only one which is totally under the control of the manager. Is the thing. So, let us look at some results shown by one study. If you look at these particular numbers, it is very clear that even if the project manager was forced to operate with very inexperienced staff and ordinary tools, just by working in a disciplined manner with structured method can almost double his productivity, can almost double his productivity. And of course, in case you have better quality of staff and your organization can afford to, you know, invest in better tools, you know, then an improvement as much as about, you know, 800 percent is possible. Okay. So, this is a very phenomenal kind of a increase, this is a very phenomenal kind of a increase. Okay. Now, let us look at the next particular offering. Okay. The software projects are mainly concerned with software process, but as mentioned earlier, the software process never operates in isolation. Now, let us look at this particular figure. In an organization, several activities are going on, procurement, audit, training, resource management, strategy planning, or, or documentation control. The software project that you undertake has to fit within these organizational processes. You know, the software project that you have must fit within this particular this thing. So, from that point of view, the first thing that we re realize is that the project needs to take a holistic view of the entire situation. The project needs to take the holistic view of the entire situation. And if you were to concentrate only on managing day to day activities of the project, you know, the project is bound to fail. You know, you need to be working on your daily activities as well, but make sure that you are also conscious of the organizational fit of the project. Okay. The project team must realize that the project issues are integrated with the organizational issues, you know, and the organizational issues are often more difficult to tackle than the project issues. Many projects fail because of such political reasons. Okay. So, project managers often concentrate on the project issues because they are immediate and more sort of familiar, you know, they are more familiar with those particular issues, you know, and often tend to ignore the issues that sort of, uh, you know, are integrated with the organization's activity. Okay. So, if you were to look at this situation, then IT professional needs to guard against getting embroiled, you know, in the technology problems while ignoring the organizational interfaces, while ignoring the 
organizational interfaces. Okay? So, now we go to the next particular thing. Now, if you look at the projects processes, now we will concentrate mainly on the software project related thing. The projects processes can be broadly classified into two groups. Okay? One is the project management processes. You know, so these basically describe and organize and you know complete the project. Okay, they are not very different from one project to another. You know, and they are described basically as umbrella activities and you know the knowledge areas for this particular project. Whereas the product oriented processes are specific to the project. You know, a poultry management system. Okay, and a refinery management system cannot be run with the same or similar processes and a very thorough knowledge of the product oriented processes is very essential for the success of the project. Okay? So, the product oriented processes specify and create the products you know for the project. Okay? They vary definitely from one project to another. Okay? These both process groups overlap and interact you know during the life of the project okay so for instance it's not possible to define the scope of a project without knowing the details of the product and similarly many other situations will prove that the product management processes and the product oriented processes must integrate and coexist within the project so, this brings us to the next important particular part, what is called a life cycle. Okay? So, now we have project life cycle and we have a product life cycle. So, what is the project life cycle? The project life cycle model basically you know tells you you know how the project will run and the product life cycle you know tells you how the product will be used effectively. Now, please remember for instance, a project may come to an end when the product is produced, but the life cycle of the product does not cease there. The life cycle of the product you know continues for a very long time till the product actually retires. Okay? So, for instance, a project to bring a new model of PC into the market okay, may be one of the projects, okay, but the product life cycle for the PC is going to be a very different kind of a model. Okay? So, many times the large products are often built as a series of activities. So, in short we can say that project management is a cross life cycle activity. Okay? It is performed across all phases okay? and the concepts of life cycle model are central to all project management thinking. Okay? So, basically achieving control you know is not possible unless you are able to plan it and the planning can't be done unless you have de well defined life cycle. Okay? So, better control is achieved only through defining these life cycles. Okay? So, ha having a life cycle helps you in clarifying the objectives, planning, then performing execution of the particular project and getting a feedback and reviewing the feedback to make sure that the project is still worthwhile. Now, when we have defined the life cycle, you know, there are basically two aspects. There are project phases and there are project activities. Okay? The project are divided into series of phases. Phases basically we say is something that we visit once, whereas activities are something that are performed on an ongoing basis. Now, let us look at the phases of a software project. Typically, requirements, design, programming, and testing are the phases. Okay? What are the examples of the activities? These are the examples of activities. Now, look at the two things common. For instance, requirements seem to design programming appear on both the sides. Now, understand what we are doing. When you are in a requirements phase, you are doing several activities, including identifying the requirements project management is another activity which is going on you know and there are several other things like you know uh, making certain documentation going on so a phase consists of many activities 
a phase consists of many activities and sometimes the dominant phase sometimes the dominant phase okay the, sorry dominant activity in a phase often is named as the phase now let's take a design as activity okay the design activity is dominant during the design phase but in case you find some mistakes the requirement activity may have to be repeated during the design phase so and so forth for programming testing quality assurance okay so project management quality assurance estimation these things never appear as a phases they are activities which are undertaken probably in all of these particular phases okay the activities which are undertaken during okay so individual activities may overlap in several phases but the phases normally don't repeat the phases don't repeat phases don't repeat now look at what are the types of software development activities you know that we perform can be grouped as so these grouping the way you perform it's like a mechano set you know you have the same basic pieces but as what putting them together you can make different models different you know you can make a truck or a tractor or a aeroplane from the same pieces by same particular logic you know using the similar basic minimal activities of software development it is possible to evolve several development strategies for a particular project okay the first one for instance is a one shot this is a ideal kind of a strategy it assumes that you have a well known application and you need to start and finish it in one go you know if you were to develop a payroll or inventory application you know it might possibly fall in this particular kind of activity very rarely you know large projects are ever undertaken with this type of a approach the next particular approach is a phased approach here what we happen is the project is too large you know we can conceive it together but you know we may not be wanting to commit all the resources at the same time in which particular case what you can do is conceive the project as a whole but execute one phase at a time you know execute one phase at a time the next particular approach can be multi shot you know the multi shot approach is developed and different from the phased activity in the sense that you know you look at only a very narrow segment one at a time you know and then go to the next segment at a time not looking beyond the frame of reference that you got in mind but there are other type of strategies also prototyping is a very important strategy prototyping in a different context can be uh, you know mentioned as a sampling activity now let's take a simple example suppose i'm interested in testing 5000 programs and somebody recommends use of a new tool you know and i may not be wanting to commit all my activity using this particular tool because of you know no prior experience of using this tool in such case you know i can always say that okay let's take a small exercise let's take 50 100 programs out of the 5000 that we got you know try to test them with this particular tool at the end of it review our experience in uh, you know testing these particular programs and if our you know experience is happy we can proceed and apply the same thing to the entire project we can apply the same thing to a entire project you know so this kind of approach is known as a prototyping approach okay then we have another particular evolution on this is a difficult one to explain you know usually defense projects you know easily fall in this particular category you know you are trying to look for a solution without knowing what really is the best solution in the situation okay so you evolve you know and you know you try it out and if you find that you are happy you know stay there if not you know try to look for the next particular phase okay so evolutionary now today most of these particular projects you know have a deadline commitment and in case you are interested in a meeting a very uh, stiff deadline you know then undertaking evolutionary kind of approach uh, would be a difficult task but if you had enough time money and resources at your disposal you could undertake this particular approach last but not the least 
you know is the concept of increment like what is the incremental design? Suppose there are several functions to be delivered by an application, okay? then you can categorize this particular functions, you know, you can categorize these particular functions okay, in a ABC minor and say that which function will deliver the maximum benefit to the organization with minimum time, money and effort involved. And you know, like doing a ABC analysis, you know, meet the A category functionality first and then the B category. Uh, this kind of approach is very difficult to sort of implement if you are contracting the project outside. And you know, this may work well in case the resources required for the project are being committed within the framework of the organization, within the framework of the organization. Okay? Now, keeping this kind of a thing in mind, you know, let us see now what are the project management process groups that we have. Okay? The first and the foremost, every project management process will have some initiating processes. What is the initiating process? You know, initiating process is all those activities which help in bringing a project, you know, formally into existence. It is like getting a birth certificate for a baby that is born, you know. So, all the activities that need to be performed in terms of validating the proposal and getting the approvals and appointing a project manager and you know calling the meetings of the concerned people, allocating the resource kind of other thing, you know. All these activities, you know, will have to be, you know, done during initiating process and probably end up with a big kick off, you know, to say that the project has really started, the project has really started. Okay? Now, once the project has physically come into existence, the next most important project process group, you know, is the planning process. Okay? And if you have to say, which is the most crucial process group in any particular project, it is this, the planning process to decide what work to do, when to do, how to do, who will do it, how to commit resources, all this kind of activity. You must realize one thing, planning activity, you know, does not start and stop at the beginning of the project and, you know, some of it may continue throughout, you know, the early phases. For instance, when we start developing a project, at the beginning of the project, we may not even know what kind of programs are going to be developed, which programs and how many. So, the question of planning to allocate the programming work does not arise, you know, and the planning usually opens as a rolling window kind of approach, you know. The more information becomes available, you know, the more is the uh, need for planning the immediate next particular thing. Once you got the, once you got the plan in hand, your next particular thing is to execute the project. Now, obviously, project execution consumes maximum resources. This particular process involves implementing a plan. This process involves implementing a plan. So, by and large, this is the biggest consumer of resources, but we do not do project execution you know, without appropriate controls, the monitoring and control, the feedback, you know, and the corrective actions is an essential part that runs hand in hand with the execution. Okay? So, basically the controlling involves again substantial amount of replanning. Once you got that, the last but not the least, you know, is your, you know, Closing processes. Closing processes. What are the closing processes? Closing processes basically bring the project formally to a end. The closing processes bring the so getting a sign off from the client, settling all the bills, you know, uh, filing and uh, you know handing over all the project papers to the uh, librarian. You know, making sure that all the uh, 
end of phase reports are completed, the learning experience from the projects are you know well documented and you know the process improvement that may arise out of the projects activity you know all those activities have been initiated you know. So, this really brings the project to a close ok. So, this kind of activities are happening individually for each phase and also for the project as a whole are happening individually for each phase and also for the project. Now, there is one more thing that we need to especially in today's environment, you know it needs to be brought out that no project can ever be done well unless the project manager is very conscious of his professional responsibility. For instance, okay, a project manager should not undertake responsibility of managing a project if he is not qualified or trained for doing so. Okay? So, this is only one particular aspect, there are so many other issues involved in being fair in allocation of work, responsibilities, assignments of load to people and monitoring the progress, reporting correctly, not pushing things under the carpet, all kinds of things will fall under the professional responsibility. Okay. So, what happens is this, if you were to now look at it, within each particular phase, you have initiating, planning, controlling, executing, closing, you know processes going on and these particular processes from one phase link with similar processes with the subsequent phases. So, the project works, you know in this particular manner where the processes from one phase are linked to processes activated during the subsequent phase. So, how does a project manager achieve this particular kind of a situation? How does the project manager achieve this kind of a situation? Okay? So, to begin with you know you have a software development methodology. Now, this methodology will define management procedures and practices that need to be followed. Once you have done that, then the project manager will need to define the methods and the tools specific to his project. Okay. He will need to coordinate and you know be coordinated guided by the management procedures and practices and provide a visible structure you know to the projects, uh, project activities to the management. Last but not the least, he will also have to define the automated tools within this particular job. He will have to define the automated tools within this particular job. So, in the end of it, this is how the whole structure will look like. You know, look at the figure, they say that you know a good software development methodology will define have management procedures, the development methods and procedures, and automated tools for completing this particular job. Now, this may all seem like a little frightening to a project manager and he may feel that he is too much tied down by the organizational procedures etcetera. That is not correct, you know, because one useful approach available to a project manager is to modify the methodology. An organization may suggest a methodology, may have a standard template for a methodology and if your project you know requires to deviate from this particular methodology, you know you need to specify what methodology you are going to follow. Okay? So, one thing is clear that you are not going to work without a methodology, but whether you follow the organizational standard methodology or you choose to adopt the methodology to meet your requirements is entirely left to your discretion. Okay? So, similarly the processes can also be modified, the methodologies, the processes you know. In case you are not able to do this particular thing you know, then you know you need to take exceptions and say you know that the, these are the reasons why those particular you know organizational dictums cannot be followed. 
So, we have policies within the organization that is management's desires, intents and mandatory practices, okay, which need to be followed within the framework of the project. For instance, a organization may have a policy not to appoint a project person as a project manager unless he is formally qualified, you know, as a project manager. And in case you have a person who is appearing for that particular examination, you, know, you can get a sort of work around to this particular thing by writing to the management that the person has appeared for the examination and the results are awaited. Okay? Remember, deviation is not a sin, but not putting the deviation in writing and where possible getting a prior approval for the deviation is definitely a sin. Now, this brings us to the next particular part. Now, suppose you want to be trained as a project manager, you know, where do you find out, you know, what do you need to be trained in? And you find that you pick two books in software engineering and their contents may or may not be same. There may be, you know, topics which are covered in one book, but not in the other. Same thing happens with project management. So, it is better to look at some standard knowledge base for a project manager. In America, there is an institute called Project Management Institute, okay, which gives a certification called PMP, Project Management Professional. And, you know, just like you have BEs and BTECs and MBAs, you know, similarly, PMPs are certified project managers. And many organizations insist that a person who is taking up a job as a project manager must be a certified project manager. Now, the Project Management Institute spells out, you know, in their document called Project Management Body of Knowledge, okay, what are the different particular skills and knowledge, knowledge skills areas that you know, a project manager needs to have. Okay? And from that particular point of view, you know, we can say that the project management institutes PMBOK, you know, is one way of defining what kind of knowledge is required by a project manager to perform his job successfully, to perform his job successfully. So, now, let us look at this particular framework of project management. Now, look at the screen. You begin a project with stakeholders expectations as your starting point and you need to complete the project, you know, successfully. This is achieved by doing the project. Okay, and for doing the project, you need to be familiar with nine knowledge areas. Four of them are the core areas, four are the facilitation areas, and one is the integration area. The four core areas are scope management, where you decide, you know, what will and will not be done by the product. Time management is very obvious, the cost management. Remember, the cost is not only dependent on the scope, it is equally dependent on time frame, because the scheduling has a very dramatic impact on the costs. Then the fourth area is of course, the quality management. So, these are the basic core functions of a project manager. The four facilitating areas are the human resource management, communications management. What is communications management? Here, all the formal communication and of course, the informal one that transpires across the project either within or outside with the clients, top management, purchaser, contractor, whatever is laid down is the communications management. You know, the communication management specified how the members of the project formally communicate with each other. Then very important area of risk management because, you know, with the planning often is done in a deterministic manner, but things do not happen the way they are planned. 
you know a very simple example is people leaving the project you know midway okay so one needs to take care of those activities you know you may have a situation where you have a strong penalty clause in you know defect rates after the product is delivered and you may be faced with a situation whether to test it yourself you know or to test this particular you know uh, uh, program from outside and last but not least the procurement management now the procurement management doesn't necessarily restrict itself to procuring hardware and communications material for the it project you know many times softwares need to be bought drivers for devices is a very common example of things which are not made by people but bought similarly in case you are interfacing your hospital information system to the laboratory information system you know the interfacing device required you know for integrating your hospital information system with the laboratory equipment will often have to be bought from outside now with object orientation the components may also be bought from outside and you may have you know many other ways in which you know the procurement of software can be done you know to meet the final aim of the project now these areas eight areas don't work well together unless you have a integrating function for instance any change to scope will have a impact on time it will have an impact on cost quality it may involve procurement it may have involve risk all kinds of things similarly so any change in any one of these particular areas is definitely likely to affect the other area so one can't make these changes without sort of having a holistic view of all the knowledge areas okay we still cannot forget our old friend professional responsibility all the time keep it at the back of your mind that behaving in a professional manner is a prerequisite for a project manager last but not the least the project manager needs to be supported with appropriate tools techniques and measurements and metrics management is a key for an organization to accumulate its experience you know an organization accumulates its experience in three places in the checklists in the matrices and in the processes so measurements play a very important role in a project management context okay now to highlight the importance of the professional ethics that we are talking about you know let's look at the ethics now we can look at this on the slide look at the ethics code of ethics specified by the project management institute undertake projects and accept responsibility only if qualified by training or experience or after full disclosure to the employer or the client maintain their professional skills at the state of art level advance the integrity and the prestige of the profession by practicing in a dignified manner support this code and encourage colleagues and coworkers to act in accordance with this particular code support the professional society by active, actively participating and encouraging the colleagues and coworkers to participate in its activity obey the laws of the country in which the work is being performed and maintain a high standard of personal and professional conduct in your personal performance work performance relationship with the employers relationship with the clients and responsibility towards community okay so we ask the next particular question in case you do all this what will happen you know you will have a successful project basically what will do increase the discipline in the project increase the productivity have a better control over the project you know you will improve your estimation you improve the quality of the products being delivered you will improve the communication that happens within the organization and how does it all happen you know it is because of use of appropriate methods and tools okay 
So, if you are in a position to well define a project life cycle and the product life cycle, it is possible that you will have a better control over the project. So, this in nutshell is our introduction to project management. We will now undertake you know various topics as follows. We will begin with scope management, then time, then we will take a detour and look at some software estimation techniques. Then we will do quality management and look at some quality management systems. We will also look at configuration management and risk management. And then though not in as much detail, we will look at the other knowledge areas like cost management, human resources management, communications management, procurement management, integration management and last but not the least, the role of project manager in executing the project. Thank you. Uh, these are the recommended books you know for you in case you want to do further reading in this particular areas. This is a book on software project management written by me, published by Prentice Hall of India. It is a revised edition 2003, the book on software project management by UGS and Cottrell from Tata McGraw-Hill. It is in its third edition 2002 and information technology project management by Cathy Schwab is by course technology Thomson Learning. The last known edition was in 2000. Thank you very much.